Greetings everyone, once again it's Motas Wase sharing with you the authentic truth brought to us by Zulasan in English. Here the teaching that we'll be sharing is going to be regarding the fall of Satan. So for anyone out there who like solid food, solid nourishment, spiritual liberation, listen carefully to the teaching I'm about to share here. And before I begin, I'd like to thank Loba, the only and unique creator to have allowed us to know the truth in this era by the scent of his mysterious son Zulasan. So Today is going to be regarding the fall of Satan and I will be using the current classical day Bible. For that, <clears throat> many of so-called fake or, or so-called pastors in churches have tried to elucidate, have tried to talk in of the depth of Satan, of who he was, his origin and who uh, he represents and where does it come from and why did he fall. But here we're not going to talk about supposition or maybe this maybe that we're gonna reveal to you the truth what truly happened and for that we're gonna use the current classical day bible but we know that there's only one authentic truth bible that is bibel without any errors or contradiction and if loba allows it in the future i will be giving the teaching with that bible <clears throat> so here we're gonna go in ezekiel chapter 20, 28 verse 12 in the new international version it says this so ezekiel 28 verse 12 it says this son of man come up take up a lament concerning the king of tyre and said to him so he says here son of man that's regarding ezekiel ezekiel who was a prophet he was told here to take a lament what is a lament in the current cl classical day Bible, a lament is a song. It's going to be um, a lamentation. It's going to be, so Ezekiel is going to speak to Satan while singing at the same time. So it's going to be a song. And you have to understand that Satan, who is the cherubim, the, the cherubim, he was a cherubim who used to sing. He was, he, he did music. And that's why Ezekiel also, when speaking to Satan, now had to use a lament, meaning had to sing to him, had to speak to him with, with a flow. <clears throat> and that's why Satan doesn't like Ezekiel. He hates Ezekiel. So, for that, we shall go here. And he says this. This is what the sovereign Lord said. You were the seal of perfection, comma, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So, he says in the New Living Translation, you were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and exquisite in beauty. So, brothers and sisters out there, the Bible reveals us that here, that the cherubim, the once anointed cherubim, was referred to as perfect in beauty. It was the seal of perfection, full of wisdom. And the first mention of cherubim in the current classical day Bible is going to be in Genesis chapter 2 verse 24, where it says, after he drove the man out, he placed on the his side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way of the tree of life. So that was after the fall of the first man and the cherubim were placed to protect the way, the path to the tree of life. And we have to understand that Satan, the once anointed cherubim, was also of the race of the cherubim. And in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13, it says this, You were in Eden, comma. And that's not Eden, the Eden that where Adam and Eve were, where Moto, the first man, and Moto were. No, that was Eden in the spiritual. That means it was in the great order of things. And he says here, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone, red carnelian, pale green, pear peridot, white moon, moonstone, blue-green beryl, onyx, green jasper, blue lapis, lazuli, turquoise, and emerald, all beautiful crafted for you and set in finest gold. They were given to you on the day you were created. So, once again, brothers and sisters, 
the cherubim was covered, was full of many, many precious stones. So full of precious stones. There's many precious stones out there that maybe you don't even know exist. And you're told here that in the Berean Study Bible, you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every kind of precious stone adorned you. Rubai, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald. Your mounting and settings were crafted in gold, prepared on the day of your creation. So, he was very beautiful. It's not me who is saying it, that's the scriptures. And because he was created perfect. He was created perfect. Ezekiel 28 verse 14. You were an anointed guardian cherub, cherub. You were an anointed guardian cherub. I placed you. You were on the, the holy mountain of God in the midst of the stones of fire you walked. So here, the scriptures taught us that he was in the holy mountain. So he was in a holy place. In the spiritual. He was in the great order of things. And he says here. In the midst of the stones of fire you walked. So he was walking in the midst of stones. And these stones. Everything in the spiritual is living. Is conscious. Has has the, the movement and life. And he walked amongst those stones. So he was also walking amongst the other entities. So other angels, other creatures in the great order of things. What is when he says here that you were an anointed guardian cherub? What is an anointed? What is to anoint? We have to understand that in the current classical day Bible, you have to understand that the Christ also was anointed, is to receive unction. Anoint is to smear or rub with oil, typically, typically as part of a ceremony. High priests were anointed with oil. So in the in the old days, in uh, so the prophets they were anointed, and they used to also anoint kings and queens. So that's the process of smear ru and rub oil. So to anoint the person, so to anointed and that cherub was anointed <clears throat> in the new international version it says this you were anointed as a guardian cherub for so i ordained you you were on the holy mount of god you walked among the fiery stones In the New American Standard Bible, it says this. In, <clears throat> it says this. And you have been with the cherub who is anointed and who shelters. And I have settled, settled you in the mountain of the holiness of God. And you have been among the stones of fire. So, in this version, it says that he was also, he was with the cherub that protects, who shelters. So Satan, who so the once anointed cherub, cherubim, he also had a guardian cherub with him. In the Aramaic Bible in plain English, it says this, You have been with the cherub who is anointed and who sheltered, and I have settled you in the mountain of holiness of God, and you have been amongst the stones of fire. So, the cherubim was perfect, was created, and he was in the holy mountain. So he was in the spiritual realm. He was in the great order of things, and he was accomplishing his mission. He was perfect in beauty. He was, he had great wisdom and was walking in the path of righteousness and he also was walking 
amongst the in the midst of the other entities. He was covered of precious stones, all sorts of precious stones. He was a cherubim. What is a cherubim? Is a cherubim is a they is a spiritual entity that has four four wings. So the cherubim wasn't created evil. He was a creature. He was created perfect. That's why it says this. In Psalms 45 verse 7 in the New International Version. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companion by anointing you with the oil of joy. So that was regarding Christ. Who was anointed. And. So. The cherubim. When he was. He was an anointed cherubim. In Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 15. In, your, in the new international version. It says this. You are blameless in your ways. From the day you were created. So he was blameless. In your ways. So in his ways. He was blameless. So that means. He was walking at according to the path of righteousness once again till wickedness was found in you so he was perfect he was walking blamelessly until wickedness was found where was the wickedness found it was found inside him not outside is not wicked wickedness that came and corrupted him no he was inside of him king james bibles Thou was perfect in thy way from the day that thou, thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. So it was found in him. English standard version, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. So that was the Shurubim. Unrighteousness was found in him. And how had how did that happen? How did unrighteousness came in him, within him? What happened from when he was walking in the path of righteousness, blameless, and the day when unrighteousness, iniquity, was within him? We have to go in Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 16 in the English Standard Version here says this. In the abundance of your trade, you are filled with violence in your midst and you sinned. So, he sinned. And what was his sin? What was his fault? What, what did he do that was wrong, that wasn't according to the word? New King James Version, by the abundance of your trading, you, become, you became filled with violence within. So he became filled with violence within. And you sinned. For that we shall go in James chapter 1 verse 14. In the New International Version it says this. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. So here in James 1.14, you're told that each person, and we have to understand that here in this teaching, it was also concerning Satan. So Satan was tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire. So Satan had an evil desire within him that emerged, that, that took him. And what was that desire? What did he want? What was that evil desire? And that tempted him. And enticed him. James 1.15, New International Version. Then after this desire is conceived, he gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So the first sin is that he wanted to be like the most high. That's what he desired. That's what he wanted. That's why in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14. In the New International Version. It says this. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. Comma. I will make myself like the most high. 
So he wanted to be like the Most High. He wanted to make himself like the Most High. New Living Translation. I will climb to the highest heaven and be like the Most High. And who is the Most High? If Loba allows it in the future teaching, I will be sharing and revealing who is the Most High. Is the Most High the Creator Himself? Is the Most High God? Who is God? Because we know that the entities, the angels, they are also considered gods. So who did Satan want it to be like? Who did that cherubim? Because before he was Satan, he was known as Satan. He was an anointed cherubim. He was in the great order of things. He was a, an entity. And he was considered more than what people know today as God. But for the understanding of people who are, who are listening to me, he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be like the Most High. <clears throat> So above, he wanted to be above all those other entities, all those angels, he wanted to be above them. <sighs> New American Standard Bible, by the abundance of your trade, <clears throat> uh, this is going to be in Ezekiel 28, 16. New American Standard Bible. By the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence. So it was internally that that desire came to, took, came, it was inside of him that he started to think about those things. He started to have that desire. You sinned. Therefore, I have cast you as a profane from the mountain of God. Period. So, here, that's the first fall of Satan. That was, he was cast from the mountain of God. So he was cast from, from the place he was in the great order of things. That's how we have to understand it here. He was cast from the place he was in the midst where it was amongst those precious stones, those fiery stones. He was cast away from there, from that mountain. And who cast him away from that mountain? If Loba allows in another teaching, maybe I will reveal who cast him away, away from that mountain. Because like I've mentioned before, there was a sherb that was near him that protected. And I have destroyed you, O oh, covering sherub. From the midst of the stones of fire. So, the first fall, like, he was cast from the mountain. He was cast from the place he was. So, because we know <clears throat> uh, that in Job's chapter 1 verse 6, one day the angel came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. I'm taking this verse to show to you that Satan, the cherub, no longer is among the other entities, the other, the angels, and so on. So that's why I took this verse to show to you that he's no longer in their presence. That's why the first fall was from that mountain. And he was then removed from the midst of the other angels that was the second fall. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 17. New Living Translation. Your heart, your heart was filled with pride. So pride. Because of your beauty. So his beauty, his position. Because he was an anointed cherub. He was perfect in beauty. He, was, he had wisdom. All that filled him with pride and he started to want to he was filled with pride because of his beauty your wisdom was corrupted by your love of splendor so i threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings so here we have to understand that ezekiel 28 verse 17 we're speaking spiritually and physically He 
Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 7. English Standard Version. He was beautiful in his greatness, in the length of his branches, for his root went down to abundant waters. In Job 33 verse 14, he says this, For God speak now in one way, now another, though no one perceive it. So here, we have to understand that in Ezekiel 31 verse 7, it was beautiful in his greatness. That's also referring to, to the cherub. In the length of his branches. Because we know that the entities are sometimes compared to as trees. Like in the Garden of Eden there were many trees. And those were entities. And you're told that for his root went down to abundant water. Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 8. New Living Translation. It says this. No other setter in the garden of God could rival it. No cypress had branches to equal to equal it. No plane had tree had bought to compare. No tree in the garden of God came close to it in beauty. So here we have to understand that that was regarding his position and comparing to some of the entities that came in after him. He, for those entities that came in after the cherub, he was like a cherry on top. The other entities, the other angels that came in after the cherub, because that were created after him, were like a beautiful cake. And Satan was the cherry on top of the cake. And so for those other angels, he was... No other setter in the garden of God could rival it. So the other couldn't rival him. No cypress had branches equal to him. No plain trees had about to compare. No tree in the garden of God came close to it in beauty. So for the other angels that were created after the cherub, the anointed cherub, the last cherubim, he was there anointed. Like, uh, sort of like their chief, if you will, their, yes, <clears throat> like their leader. Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 9, New Living Translation. Because I made this tree so beautiful and gave it such magnificent fol foliage, it was the envy of all other trees of Eden, the garden of God. So the other entities that were created after the cherub admired that cherub. He's admired. The, he mentioned here because he was magnificent and he was the envy of all the other trees of Eden. And here envy, that envy is not the envy of is more like an admiration and those other trees because like i've mentioned it was the envy of all the other trees of eden those trees they were living they were conscious there are other entities other creatures because everything is living in the great order of things so they had life and movement they had they were beings Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 17, English Standard Version says this, Your heart was proud because of your beauty. In Daniel 5 20, New International Version, it says this, But when his heart became arrogant, so here in the current classical day Bible, they will mention heart. But we have to understand that in the spiritual sense. His heart became arrogant, so it was inside him. He became arrogant and hardened with pride, comma, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. So that position filled him with pride. He became arrogant. He wanted to be, he conveyed, he wanted something else. He, like I mentioned in Isaiah 14, 14, I will, he says, 
I will make myself like the most high. He was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. Isaiah 14, 13. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. So you have to under understand this, that spiritually. He wanted to raise, he wanted another position. He wanted something more. He wanted to be above the other entities. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And those stars in these will represent the other entities. I will sit enthroned in the mount of assembly on the utmost height of Mount Zephon. In the English Standard Version, it says this, You said in your heart, I will ascend to, to heaven above the stars of God. I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of of the north. So he wanted the high position. The top top. He wanted to be the big. You see. Psalms chapter 48. Verse 3. Beautiful in his loftiness. The joy of the whole earth. Like the heights of Zephon. Is Mount Zion. The city of the great king. So he you have to understand this spiritually because I'm giving verses here that will refer to also in the physical. But we have to understand that that was also referring to uh, to try to show, to try to demonstrate, to try to explain to you uh, how, what was going on in the spiritual. So he wanted to be in that position. In that city, and that city uh, have to you, you have to understand that has that position. Verse four: God Himself is in Jerusalem towers. So here in the current classical day Bible, as you know, He will mention that God Himself is in Jerusalem, so is contained, is somewhere. So that cannot be the Creator. So revealing Himself as its defender. So that's why I've mentioned that you have to understand this spiritually. He wanted, he, he wanted that position. Isaiah 14.14 14. <clears throat> English Tender Version I will ascend above the height of the cloud or make myself like the Most High. Ezekiel 28.2 In the proud of your heart you said, I am God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. So, that's what he wanted that's what he says that he was god that's and we have to understand that spiritually he he for him he wanted to be the most high and for him he thought that he had the ability the potential he could have that position because for someone for example i will take an example in the physical so for us to understand for example, for just a regular citizen to be, for example, the king or the president of a whole country, if the, and you, you know that the cherub, he was full of wisdom. So for a person to want a position, so for him, if he conveyed a position, he thinks that he has the ability to have that position, to to be the king or to be the president to rule over others. He had the, the capacity, the, he had the mental ability, all that. The, um, and the intelligence and so on. And for Satan in his, in his uh, how would I say this? In his demands, in his, um, in his desire... He thought that he had the ability, he had the potential, he had all the necessary, uh, uh, I'll use the word tools, but all the necessary uh, energy, power uh, to have that position. Son, in Ezekiel 28, 2. Uh, 
in Ezekiel 28, 6, he says this, Therefore, thus said the Lord God, because you have imagined your mind to be like the mind of God, in bracket, having thought uh, and planned like God himself. So here, for here in the current classical day Bible, they're referring that God has a mind. So uh, in, under, in the understanding here, we have to understand that those who have written the Bible uh, were limited in their understanding of the spiritual things. So that's why we have to uh, put this in context. That's why I'm using the current classical day Bible. Uh, but like I've mentioned, for the, that cherub for during his fall, his desires, for him, he imagined that he had all he took, or the ability, the power, the greatness, everything, uh, the capacity, the ability to have that position and to rule over others. That the most high, the top, the big boss, he wanted. <clears throat> In New Living Translation in Ezekiel 28.2, Son of man, give the prince of Tyre this message from the sovereign Lord. In your great pride you claim, I am God, I sit on a di divine throne in the heart of the sea. But you are only a man and not a God, though you boast that you are a God. NET Bible says this in Ezekiel 28.6, Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you think you are godlike. New International Version. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you think you are wise. As wise as God. Ezekiel 28.13. New International Version. I will put an end to your noisy songs. Comma. So... I will put a stop to your noisy song, period, uh, in the New Living Translation. No more will the sound of harps be heard among your people. New International Version, and the music of your harps will be heard no more. So, brothers and sisters who are listening to the message. The cherub, we know... In this reality, there are the there is singers, there is uh, musicians that may use their voice, that may use other sort of instruments to play music. But the sheriff himself, he made one with the instruments of music. He was the like a living music personified. That's why in Ezekiel 28 verse 13, he says, You are in Eden, the garden of God. Your clothing was adorned with every precious stone. So it's mentioned that he was adorned with precious stones. And he says here in the Berean Study Bible, your mountings and settings were crafted in gold, prepared on the day of your creation. In King James Bible, he says this the workmanship of thy tabret and of thy pipes was prepared in the in the day that thou was created. So in the King James Bible, it says that that tabrets and that pipes was prepared in thee. So those instruments were in him. Those musical instruments were part of him. So where he was, when he was, I will use words so we can understand but when he was moving going 
back and forth. I'm using words in the visible and the physical so we can understand, but that's spiritually that we have to understand this. He was making music. He was like a, a living music. He says here uh, in For people who don't know, we have to. I'm going to give the, the definition of a tabret. So the tabret is a principal, well, here it says the principal percussion instruments of ancient Israelites. So it was an instrument of music. That's what a tabret is. And here he says in the literal standard version it says this the workmanships so that's still in Ezekiel 28 13 the workmanships of your tambourines now there's tambourines and of your pipes in you in the day of your being produced, have been created. So, tambourines, pipes, tabret. You have to understand that spiritually, that he was a living music. He was, he did one with instruments of music, and that's why Ezekiel spoke to him while singing. Now. That's why in Ezekiel 26, 13, New International Version, I will put the hand to your noisy songs and the music of your harps will be heard no more. So, in Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 10, New International Version, it says this, Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, Because... So the Lord here, that's what they use as in the current classical day Bible. We have to understand. Because the great cedar towered over that, the thick foliage, and because he was proud of his height, comma. So, verse 11. I gave him, I gave it into the hand, into the hands of the rulers of, of the ruler of the nations for him to deal with according to his wickedness so this is now the third fall of satan because the first fall was it was take he was cast out of the mountain so of his position of where he was because he was in a holy place and we know that in john 14 2 my father he says this my father's house has many rooms so in the great order of things there is many residents there's many i'm going to use the word rooms that's what he used in the current classical day bible but you have to understand that spiritually there's many places there's many residents in the great order of things any that cherub because of his wrong desire evil desire had to be cast out of all the desires from the holy mountain so from the holy place the first fall from the holy mountain the second he was cast away from so he was no longer in the midst of the other entities of the other angels of the other <coughs> um those fiery stones that would represent those entities so that's the second fall now the third fall he says here, I will give it over. So we have to understand here, he will be given to the leader of the nation. Who is the leader of the nation? Period. He was, he was judged truly as its self sinfulness deserves. I have thrown it out. So Satan 
the cherub was chased away from all the dwelling places in the great order of things. And to know who the rulers of the nation is, we go in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael, comma, the great prince who stands watch over your people, comma, will rise up, period. There will be a time of distress, comma, the likes of which will not have occurred from the beginning of nations until that time, period. But at that time, your people, every, everyone whose names is found written in the book, will be delivered. Contemporary English version. Michael, the chief of the angels, is the protector of your people. And he will come at a time of terrible suffering. And you have to understand here that that will be the suffering of that once anointed cherub, Satan. And he will come to... And it will be a time of distress for Satan. It will be a time of distress for the once anointed cherub. <sighs> time of distress known in the annals of creation. John chapter 12 verse 31. New Living Translation. It says this. The time for judging this word has come. Comma, when Satan. Comma, the ruler of this world will be cast out. So out where? Because he was chased away from the mountain, away from the other entities. Now he was going to be chased away from the great order of things altogether. And where will he be then if he's no longer in the great order of things? That's a question that maybe we'll be answering in another day. And... For that casting to take place, so for that third fall, we go in Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. It says this in verse 7, New Living Translation. Then there was a war in heaven, period. So there was a war, a great spiritual battle. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon. So the dragon, that's, the sh that's Satan, that's the once anointed cherub. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon and his angels. Now you are also told in Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 that Satan had angel at his service that also fought against Michael and the angels of Michael's. So it was a spiritual battle and it was a war. And why did, who are those angels of Satan? And why did they take part of his rebellion? Why did they follow him? Why did they follow his cause? That's a question for another day if Luba allows it. <laughs> but here we're going to stop in the fall of Satan. <clears throat> Verse 8, New Living Translation. And the dragon lost the battle, period, <clears throat> uh, comma. So he lost the battle. He lost the war. So he will be cast out because Michael and his angels were more powerful, had more, because the cherub, he wanted to be the most high. He wanted to be who he is not. He wanted to be something more, something else. And he thought that he had the power, he had everything to have that position. But we put him, he was put against Michael. And he couldn't defeat Michael. He couldn't fight against, he couldn't resist, he couldn't win against Michael. So that's not even all the other entities. Because we know that there's other entities even more powerful than Michael. But... The once anointed cherub was put against Michael to <clears throat> and his angels. And he couldn't win that war. He couldn't win that battle. And the dragon lost the battle. And he and his angel were forced out of heaven. So he was cast out. Hmm. <laughs> 
Luke 10, verse 18, New, Eternal, New Living Translation. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Verse 9 of Revelation chapter 12, New Living Translation. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. Chapter 14, um, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, New International Version, it says this. How have you fallen from heaven, comma, morning star? Here, brace yourself. Satan, he's being called morning star. Son of dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. You want, you who once laid low to low the nations. So, Satan is called the morning star, son of the dawn. Why is he called morning star? Morning star, son of the dawn. What is the morning star? What is the son of the dawn? Who is he? What does that represent? Revelation 2.28, New Living Translation. They will have the same authority I received from my father. Comma. So this was the angel speaking on behalf of the Christ in the current classical day Bible. And I will also give them the morning star. So the Christ said, through his angel so the angel says that he says it from Christ so he speaking on behalf of that he's gonna give um, they will have the same authority I receive from the father my father and I will also give them the morning star so who will they be given who is the morning star Are they going to be, is the angel saying here that they going to give Satan to the, the one who are known, to the one who will be saved? Question mark. New International Version, it says this. In <clears throat> Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, he says this, I, Christ, have sent my angel to give you this testimony to the churches. I am the root. He says here, but he says here in the current classical day Bible that he is the root of the offspring of David and The bright morning star. So the Christ says here that he is the bright morning star. That's the, the passage that we're going to be focusing on in this teaching. So the Christ is also known in the current classical of the Bible as the bright morning star. But Satan was also called the morning star. Why? That was a bracket. Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 16. He says this in the New International Version. I made the, na the nations tremble at the sound of his of its fall. Hmm. So that was the falls, the fall of Satan, the fall of the once anointed cherub. And the lesson that we have to learn here, that we have to understand the teaching is that the lesson. If the once anointed cherub wasn't spared because of his evil desire, because he sinned, because he conveyed a position that wasn't his, because he went against the word, he went, he went, he went against the law, why would you be spared? You out there, people who sinned who commit fraud, and so on. Who, all those pastors, fake pastors out there, 
who talk about nonsense, who teach nonsense to their uh, in their assemblies, who lies, who are in confusions, who are in delusions, who contradict themselves all the time, who don't even know the scriptures. Why would you be spared if the once anointed cherub who was anointed and who was he anointed by? And because of his fall, because of his sin, because of his um, delusion, he was cast out. So, that was the fall of Satan, the tree fall. And if Loba permits, we're going to be in the future, if Loba allows it, talking even more, more in depth about the question that I have asked here. And this teaching was with the current classical day Bible, because I know that many of you out there in English uh, use the current classical day Bible. So I'll be using in some of the teachings here, going back to some of the teaching that Zul Lassan did to take you back from a little bit from the beginning so we can um, <clears throat> so we can understand and build from the foundation uh, that many of you have in the current classical day Bible. All glory to Loba, the only and unique creator.